So I was then able then to again let go of that and to step away from that. So what happens, we believe, is that through soul contracts and agreements, they arise out of the shock of our pain or the shock of our illness. So again, lots of illnesses um, can, again, prevent us from stepping into who we are as individuals. That pain and that soul contract or agreement we believe as shamans you're able to rewrite. So if you're able to rewrite that contract, if you came here to this, into this existence with a particular contract of poverty or illness or family despair or a variety of other things, you can rewrite that particular contract. And once you rewrite that contract, and usually that happens in lower world, and we'll talk about that in just a few moments, once you rewrite that contract, what happens then is you're released from the things that are happening to you that you would consider to be negative or that you don't want to experience any longer in your life. What happens when you do entheogen work? when you do psilocybin, when you do ayahuasca, when you do peyote, when you do any of those, is that many, many times, if you're led into it correctly, you're going to know exactly what you need to rewrite, and you're going to know how to do that, and who it is that comes to you within that state of being under those entheogens is going to help you do that work. Pretty amazing. And I will just tell you that story after story after story, I talk to many, many people, again, that are able to do those entheogens, whichever one that is. And like I had said before, I believe that there is a correct entheogen for everyone, a correct psychedelic, if you would like to say, for everyone that can allow you to step into that. People that are chronically depressed, I, um, I did work one time with a man that his whole family had been depressed. He'd been depressed for years. So one of the first um, clients that I had that actually came to me from another state, his psychiatrist sent him to me and said, whatever it takes, we'll get you off of whatever medication that you're on so that you can do this. Because he said, what I want to experience before I die, he was 72 years old, is I want to be able to experience not being depressed. And I said, okay, so let's take a look at that. And I got him ready to do it. And all of a sudden, you know, he has this amazing breakthrough. He tells me initially over and over again that he doesn't feel anything, so I give him more and I give him a little more. <laughs> and then there's a big explosion. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, I hear hollering and, you know, I'm right there. And I said, I said, what is it? What is it? And he goes, I'm in Russia and my contract is that everyone dies before I die. And I choose that because I want to hold them so they don't feel alone. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd be depressed if my, all of my people were dying and I was the last one. Interestingly, I said, okay. I said, what do you want to do about that? And he goes, I want to just make sure that going forward that my sons and my daughters and my grandchildren don't carry this generationally forward any longer. It ends with me. And I said, so be it. And again, the next day, he said, I'm a changed human being. No longer the same. No longer the same. That's the kind of work that, again, I believe, again, that we can achieve. Um, we also have a lot of irrational beliefs. Um, a great psychologist in the 50s by the last name of Skinner, um, talks about the, um, again, uh, there was a great test, you can probably get it on the um, internet, uh, and it's the 10 most common irrational beliefs that people have, for, exa for example, uh, one of my favorite is that I must be unfailingly competent in all that I do. That's of type A personalities, I don't know anything about that, uh, but that's that type A personality um, that believes if we can just do it all ourselves, we don't rely upon anybody else to do it for us. Um, it'll get done a lot better. 